I have been given to pheasants. Um, uh, a friend who I was giving some bread to uh, said that I want a couple of pheasants, and he gave me a couple of pheasants. Very generous. Um, so uh, I have decided that I am going to uh, the uh, pheasants. Nice. Uh, the breast is really nice. The only problem is uh, the legs are very, very, very full of lots of little sinews. And if you roast them, uh, not particularly nice to eat. So we're going to. I'm going to comfy them. Uh, in uh, I haven't got any duck fat. I've got some uh, lard, uh, which was left over from the spare bit of uh, pork belly that I turned into bacon. So we're going to uh, comfy them in uh, pork lard. But first, we need to marinate them. And f but first of all, we need to prep them. Um, so they're just like a most most birds are just are all kind of like made the same way. So they're a little bit like a chicken. So we need to. This one has just had its spine spine split. Uh, so we just need to dislocate the hip bone and then we need to cut round and cut the leg off and this one's going to be a little bit more tricky uh, can we just pop it yes a little bit more tricky because it's smaller a lot easier with chicken i can imagine it'd be even easier with no it wouldn't be easier with a, uh, an emu because they'd be too big but so pop the joint out and then cut around try not to make too much of a mess where are we tease that away uh, there we go. You can still see. There we go. So, confine is a really good way of slow cooking something without it drying out. Oh, there we go. That's quite alright. Uh, we'll just move that out of the way. We'll do something with the that in a second. This one's a nice bird. It's got a lot more fat on it, as you can see here. It's got a lot more fat, so this would be a lot nicer bird. But the confin method is really good because it uh, it doesn't dry out for a slow cooking process because it's cooked in fat. Well, they want to pop. Do that one first. So I'll cut round. Tend a bit of oyster meat there. I can just see the bone there. There we go. The problem with smaller birds as well is you can end up cutting through the bone with a sharp knife. With bigger birds, you don't have that problem. So we can fill the spine there. Oh, you bugger. It's just the price you pay for something coming from a, a hunt. The outcome is just as good a condition as the wood you'd get from a, a game merchant, but they're free. Well, the price of a, a loaf of bread, which I was making anyway. Ah, I just popped it. You just spend a lot more time on the legs, so they're tougher little buggers. So well, that's that. This one's broken, but it'll be fine. We'll work it out. Yeah, so confident. Um, because they are so sinewy, they do take a lot longer than something like a duck leg. The duck legs that you tend to buy are, mind you, pheasants are farmed, but then they get released into the wild. So that ducks tend to be uh, actually bred in captivity and then farmed. But just a little bit of investigation. Slice down there. So we get that off and we can see where we are. Ah, there we go, it's popped. Right, so carcasses there, legs here, not a bad size. 
they will shrink, uh, but you can see there, just at the end, all those little bits, that's bone, but all those little bits there are sinew. So it's not particularly nice to eat, but however, through the slow cooking process, uh, we will break all that down. I'll just remove a few hairs. We'll break all that down and uh, they will be delicious and they'll crisp up as well. So, in a bowl, legs down, like, just that, that's the one we want down, and then we want some salt. Um, What's that going to do is going to just draw out some of the moisture and then I haven't got any garlic uh, and I wouldn't put garlic in anyway because um, pheasant can be a little bit stronger in flavour. So the garlic uh, generally improves, improves flavours but uh, with pheasant uh, I wouldn't recommend the garlic because it's quite strong flavour anyway. Unless you like that strong flavour then, uh, then by all means use garlic but I'm not going to. So they will sit. Should I salt a little bit? Yeah, put a little salt on there. Quite a lot of salt, but it's going to draw out the moisture. I still know a little bit. So they will sit for 24 hours. Cling film over the top, cover them, or maybe a plate. I've got, a, yeah, I'll put a plate on top instead of cling film, cutting down the plastic and all that. So we will uh, leave that for 24 hours, and then we'll cook them slowly in some uh, pork fat um, tomorrow. So that's it for the moment. But instantaneously, we'll start the next video tomorrow on here. If that makes sense, be fine as well uh, do the pheasant breast uh, while I'm here. So I'm going to um, fry stuck roast the uh, pheasant breast. I'm going to have them for my uh, tea tomorrow. They're only small so I'm going to have them both because I'm greedy. So we just want to roast the breast. Um, so just to neaten things up we're going to take, we've already taken the legs off which uh, are just there, which I'm comfying and we're just going to take this part of the animal off. So slice through there. I'm going to be left with the crown, just in the same way that you get a turkey crown for Christmas. This is exactly the same thing. So, slice through there, and then nice heavy knife and one swift move through that bit there. There we go. So we're left with a pheasant crown. That's some nice bits of fat. And so. Uh, that fat's going to be useful for frying it off. So we'll pull that fat off. Um, I'm not going to save the bones because I'm not going to make any stock and the freezer's full. So, but we'll have that fat off there. Ordinarily I would save the bones for stock, but I don't, I'm not going to be making any pheasant stock and I don't think I'll be getting any more pheasants long, well, for, for, for quite a while, uh, and I don't want to be left with some random bones in the freezer, but we'll pick that fat off. What we'll do is we'll render that fat down, and then that's what we'll cook the um, the breasts in tomorrow, uh, yeah, tomorrow. So this one's just not as good a bird because it hasn't got as much fat on. That's not a problem, still be lovely. So knife through there, and then through there, like that, crunch, the neck will be all right, and there we go. So, two turkey, turkey crowns, two pheasant crowns ready for roasting tomorrow. That's fine, there's not pretty much fat on there, so that can go in the bin. Um, what I would say is if you are prepping meat and you're worried about putting the meat in the bin, uh, what I do, uh, if it's if it's a long time since it's going to be a while till till the bin gets emptied uh, what I do is I put the meat uh, any raw meat or cooked meat that I've been prepping I put it in the freezer and then I throw it away on um, on put it in the bin on bin day and then you don't you never get the smell of uh, of rotting meat in your bin especially in the summertime when things are a little bit warmer your bin can end up absolutely stinking uh, if you're not careful so you just put it in the freezer freeze it wrap it in a uh, in the freezer and then uh, and then on bin day when you put your bins out you put the put the meat in from the freezer and it never smells there you go so that's that's today's top tip so there'll be a follow-up video on uh, frying and and what we call it and uh, faffing around with the pheasants tomorrow i think i'll cover it in bacon uh, we'll wrap some bacon and we'll probably burn off any take those extra hairs off when we're eating it up tomorrow but i think i've done enough meat prep today so that's it for the moment 
that's not it because I need to take the wishbone out. So the wishbone is just there and there. So sharp knife in there and sharp knife in there. That's down one side and you go down the other side of the wishbone there. You can feel it with your knife and your fingers. You just run it down the side. Nice and that. Making a mess of things on the camera. Cut through. I always forget the pheasants. They are. They've had more time. The, the more time for the bones to grow, so they are tougher and a little bit more brittle. So. And cut up there, and cut up there. So just pin it away from the bone up there. A little bit of a snap. Pull the meat away from the wishbone, and there we go. Come on, you little bugger. Snip there, snip there, snip there. Yeah, that's the wishbone on that one. So this one might be easier, although it's probably easier because I've just done it on that one. So, where are we? Don't want that. Get rid of that. So, you can just feel it's just there and just there. So, knife down one side. Knife down the other, back up into the canvas there, knife down there, knife down there, monkey around up there, so, and then tease it away from the meat, and then pull out, that just means it'll come off the breastbone's a lot easier, so get rid of that. There we go, they are now ready for roasting. Tomorrow we'll frying and then roasting. I might just blast a few of the hairs off, the, the little bits of uh, hair off with the blowtorch tomorrow, but that's tomorrow. That's it for the moment. Um, Confit, um, pigeon legs, not pigeon, pheasant legs. Uh, so they've been marinating for uh, 24 hours. Uh, a little bit of moisture has come out of them and they've firmed up uh, because of the salt. Um, I'm going to use uh, lard which I lend, rendered down from uh, some pork belly stroke bacon that I was making. Uh, I've just been melting it in the oven so it's a little bit warm. Uh, purists say you would say you have to use uh, duck or um, goose fat. Um, I say no. I say that um, this is kind of quite a peasanty kind of thing to do as a way of preserving and they would people would use any fat that they could get their hands on so we'll just move the time it's done that it's done its job we might add it to the fat actually double C but as you can see it seems a lot meets a lot firmer now so flesh side down in the pan um, and then we're going to cover it with more fat I just didn't want to add too much fat now we need to add some more fat so Fine. I'm not going to brush off the salt because that's going to have seasoned it uh, and some of the salt will then come into the lard so that'll be fine so it needs a lot more fat than that because what's going to happen is when we heat up those uh, heat it up um, the meat's going to contract and it will pop out of the top of the fat which is not what we need so it needs to be kind of quite quite plenty of fat but I don't want to put too much in because it's going to end up tasting a pheasant and then I'm not really going to be able to use it for anything else so we'll put in that much we could always add a little bit more yeah we'll just add that much for the moment and then it needs to go on the heat so and it needs to be a slow 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 cook uh, that's just move that so it's not out of the way so heat it on underneath the back getting up to temperature doesn't matter too much but you want a slow 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 cooking um, and then it will tenderize um, if you if you cook things that are a little bit tough 
uh, fast, what happens is the temp the meat tends to become a little bit stringy. So we're gonna we're gonna cook we're gonna we're gonna cook it really 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 really, really slowly. Um, normally people kind of want to talk about there being one or two you can see a little bit better there one or two little bubbles uh, coming up from the bottom of the pan when it's slowly cooking i don't even think it needs that i think it just needs to be it needs to be hot to touch on the outside and kind of quite still and it might take uh like a comfy duck leg might take three hours uh, some people would say two i'd say more like three until they're completely cooked all the way through and nice and tender these might take three they might take four they might take five it's just one of those processes it's quite a Pheasant's uh, legs are a lot tougher and they've got a lot more sinew going through them, so we need to cook very, very, very slowly and over a long period of time. But once we've got it up to temperature, it can just sit on the back of the stove uh, with a lid off, no lid, a lid off, uh, and just tick away slowly at the back of the stove. If you've got like a, if the oven's on all day and you've got slow cooking something, then, you know, put, by all means, put them in the bottom. But, or if you've got like a, an Arga or a, a Rayburn, something along those lines that's always on, uh, if it's just warm on top, then that'll keep it warm uh, for the majority of the day. So we'll just turn that down slightly, and then just slowly, slowly, slowly cook. So we'll, I'll show you what it wants to look like when it's up to temperature, and if we need to li add a little bit more fat, but you'll kind of see. But we just need to bring it up to temperature first, and then we'll get, we'll uh, we'll show you what it's like. Right. So there's too much movement in that pan, and it's on its lowest heat. So we're going to move it onto the smallest burner which is that one there, and we're going to have it on the lowest heat possible on that burner. So that's off, this one on, lit, and just turn it down as much as you can without it going off. Like that. So, barely any movement, and it'll be fine. There's always going to be a little bit of foam coming to the top, but as little movement as possible. Uh, it's going to take its time, but we're not doing anything else, so it doesn't really matter. It's one of those things that if you are just around the house, uh, you can just have it ticking away throughout the day and, uh, and not have to keep too much of an eye on it. You know. Although I would, once I got it to a, a stage of um, gentle cooking, I know that they're going to take two or three hours to cook, bare minimum. So I could go out for a couple of hours, but a uh, lot of people aren't comfortable with leaving uh, things on in the house. Uh, but I am uh, because I'm a little bit reckless that way. So, uh, but that's fine. No kind of more movement than that. Um, they did want to puff up and they did want to poke out of the pan, but I've just moved the legs so they're completely submerged in the fat, and then the uh, uh, and so I don't need to add any more fat. We might get rid of that scum, but it's not going anywhere, it's not going to boil into the fat, so it doesn't really matter at this stage. So it can just happily sit there, ticking away for the next however long it takes to cook. pan is barely the oil or the fat in the pan is barely moving however it is the sides of the pan are too hot to touch so we know I don't know exactly what that temperature will be but that'll be about 80 degrees which is about spot on it's going to take its time to cook there's no great rush but uh, if something is cooking that slow uh, then it's going to be really 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 tender unless the meat is extremely tough uh, then you're never going to get that. You're never going to get that tough uh, unless you cook uh, cook something under pressure. But um, that's going to it's going to sit happily. Um, it's going to bare minimum of heat. There might be if you imagine like there might be a candle's worth of heat going into that. A uh, candle flame's worth of heat going into that moment. So it's it's too hot to touch. So we know it's cooking. So it's going to be absolutely delicious. We'll just keep an eye on it. I'll leave it for two hours and then we'll give it a poke with a skewer. And see and see how it's doing, but it will be that be spot on. That's spot on. Is that um, there's no need to rush at all with this one. Pheasant legs have been on for ooh, five and a half, six hours. Um, they've just been cooking gently all afternoon. There's been I've not been in a rush, um, so it doesn't really matter about time. Um, but as we can see now, we've got a skewer and we can easily push that skewer skew it through them so we kind of we kind of if you imagine the uh, kind of tenderness of um, pulled pork would be the kind of best way to kind of think about it um, I've got a jar here which I've just sterilized with a bit of hot water uh, and I'm going to put them in the jar with the fat on top of them and then that will preserve it hopefully hopefully the jar's a good size might need a bit of a jiggery poker in Uh, yeah, it should be fine. 
I might need to add some more fat to it. That's not a problem. Could have turned, maybe I should have turned some bone off them and put them in a smaller jar, but it will be fine. Need to do this while it's still hot, and then everything is completely sterile. Sterile. Um, you don't want any kind of bacteria, and the fat's going to keep it, preserve it for months and months and months and months and months and months and months. So, what can we do? Let's get that out of the way. Ah, I'm going to want to poke through. It's not going to fit in the smaller jar, but it doesn't matter. So we'll see how we go, and then pour the fat over. There's some, you might be able to see, you can just see down the bottom, there's some cooking juice, uh, which is fine. We'll, what we call it, we'll leave that in as well. That's, that'll go straight down to the bottom of the jar, and uh, and it'll what we call it, and it'll, uh, that'll stay preserved as well. Shall we use a funnel? No, we'll just risk it. Risk it for a biscuit. So, making sure that everything... Oh, we're going to have enough. Oh, maybe not. We'll give it a shake. It might just cover everything. So, just needs a little bit more fat. They're not going to press down. Oh, they might do. No, it needs some more fat in that. I'll get some more lard out of the uh, out of the cupboard, and then uh, I'll heat that fat up, and then pour it over the top of the uh, of the what we call it of the uh, of the legs. We don't want anything. Oh, no, they might do. Might want to press down. Okay, buggers. So yeah, that's about, ah, yeah. So we just still need a little bit more fat on top, just to completely cover everything. Even if the bone is sticking out the top, and uh, there potentially be little little bits of meat. On that which uh, if, if the bacteria gets to it will want to uh, it might turn it off which is not what you want to do so everything wants to be completely submerged underneath the uh, underneath the fat and then sterile lid on and then that's going to keep uh, it'll keep in the fridge for years it'll keep in a cool um, dry uh, dark place uh, for a long time six months dead easy I would say I would say uh, you just need to kind of keep it out and things like that but there we go, they're what we call it. I'm not, ordinarily I would have eaten them um, straight away. Don't need to put them in a jar, you can put them in like a, in, a, in an earthenware pot or a glass a glass uh, bowl or something like that. I just wanted them in the jar because I'm going to put a lid on and it, it'll just sit somewhere uh, nice and safe. Um, but I would have eaten them ordinarily, but I've got those, I've got the four breasts which I'm going to have at the weekend and I just don't want to be a bit like overly pheasanted out uh, for the moment. So that's it, if you want to, you can do that with uh, goose legs, you can do that with duck legs, uh, lots of game birds, uh, and it's a similar kind of process. You can also do it with pork belly and things like that. It's kind of, uh, if you want to preserve uh, meats, uh, confine in oil is a good way of doing it. So that's just a, a video on confine.